This is the second section of chapter 9, reducible differential equations. And here we're going to be looking at using a substitution to help us solve uh, a second order differential equation. So uh, we're going to use the same principles and methods as we did before for the first order differential equations. So we'll be given some sort of substitution. OK, so the substitution will be given and using that substitution uh, we will create a second order differential equation that's of this form it may not necessarily be y and x this is just an example but it will be in terms of uh, two variables x and y or y and t or x and t something like that But uh, this is the form that we'll have. And uh, remember, we can solve these. Um, you would have learned how to do it in core two. I'll put a link in the description for that. And remember to do these, we will need to find the complementary function. And also find the particular integral particular integral and then the general solution if I just call this CF and this PI the general solution is just going to be the complementary function plus the particular integral so general solution so this will have arbitrary constants in it complementary function plus particular integral OK, so the substitution that's been given here is u or x equals e to the u. We'll just underline that there. And there are two parts before going on to solve the uh, second order differential equation. We need to show that this expression is true in part A and this expression is true in part B. So part A, um, let's just write down what we've been given, which is x equals e to the u now i will differentiate that to find dx du and dx du is also e to the u now what does that mean that means that uh, dx du actually equals x so i'll write that down actually rather than saying equals u there so because they're both the same thing i can say that x equals dx du Now, I should really be keeping an eye on what I want to get to. So maybe I should draw that and put that in a box up here. This is what I'm trying to get to. And uh, let's see what we need to, to do then. So if I look at the expression that I've got so far, well, I've got an x here. What's missing is a dy dx, and this is slightly different. So what I can do, I can multiply both sides by dy dx okay this is basically the chain rule but i sort of think of it like a fraction it's dy dx just multiply both sides by dy dx but strictly speaking it's the chain rule so the left hand side will become x dy dx and the right hand side will become dx du times by dy dx now you can see what's going to happen here is these will cancel out just leaving you with dy du and it gives us the expression that we want so using the chain rule is is quite helpful in these types of questions so we've got x dy dx equals dy du as required so now if we go on to part b Part B, now we've got this second order differential equation here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take what we had from part A and we're going to differentiate both sides with respect to X. I'm going to take this side, differentiate it with respect to X. I'm going to take this side, 
and differentiate it with respect to x. So if I start with the left hand side, if I differentiate with respect to x, this is a product. So I'll think of this part as u and this part as v. So I want to have uh, u first and then um, v dash. So that will be x. Then if I differentiate this with respect to x, it just becomes the next derivative up. So d squared y over d x squared so that's uh, half of it then the other half of the uh, product rule is going to be uh, this part here times by this differentiated which is just going to be one so we just put plus dy dx now the other side if we're going to differentiate this with respect to x it's not an x term so i differentiate it as if it were an x term so what does that become d squared y over du squared we just differentiated it but we differentiate it with respect to x so i've just differentiated this term as if it was an x term but what type of term is it well the letter at the bottom tells you this is like a u term so the letter at the bottom tells you so we haven't actually got a letter like u on its own we've got this derivative here but the letter at the bottom tells you what type of letter you need to treat it as so what have we done we've just differentiated a u term because that's what the bottom letter tells us it is as if it were an x term now i've just written down what it is we need to get to because you want to keep an eye on this to see what we need to do so i can see this term has appeared um, but i want to take away dy dx from both sides so i'll have um, x d squared y over dx squared is equal to this d squared y over du squared du dx minus dy dx then what i'm going to do i do notice that it's got x squared not x so i'm going to multiply everything by x so that will give me x squared d squared y dx squared so I could probably put a tick by this because now I've got that term there equals now multiplied everything by X. I've got X D squared Y D U squared D U D X minus X D Y D X. Now we're actually almost there. Let's have a look at what we've got and see if there's any substitutions we can make. Well, x here, well, that's e to the u. So let's just write that down, just put e to the u there. And also, we worked out in the first part that du dx is e to, e to the u. Now, what have I got here? I've not got du dx, oh, sorry, I've not got dx du, I've got du dx, I've got the reciprocal of this. So actually this bit is the same as one over e to the u. So let's write that down. And also I notice this x dy dx, well, that is what we proved in part a. And what does that equal? Well, this part equals dy du. So this part here, let's put a little cloud around it. That bit there is the same as dy du. Just made that y look more like a y rather than another u at the top. So now we're just going to make those substitutions. So we have x squared, d squared y, dx squared. Then we'll write e to the u here, where the x was, d squared y over du squared. Then we'll write 1 over u, or 1 over e to the u where we had du dx minus and then we can substitute that x dy dx to dy du dy du so we can see that these will cancel out here and that gives us the final result which they ask for which is this so um, that will equal d squared y 
over du squared minus dy du. So we've proved that result as required. So always keep an eye on what you're trying to get to and look at what you've proved in previous sections. So we used this, didn't we? Yeah, and also look at your derivatives as well. And make sure that as you're working through the question, you're really careful with your dy dx's and du dx's and so on. It's easy to make a mistake if you're, if you're not careful. But keep an eye on what you're trying to get to. Look at what substitutions you can make and you will get to the result that they want. Yeah, bit by bit. So for part C, uh, first thing we're going to do, um, this is the differential equation we're trying to find a general solution of. And we've actually sort of proved these little statements here. So the first thing that we need to do is some substitution. Substitution because um, we have worked out what this is equal to, this thing here. So we'll substitute those and also this part here yeah we've worked out actually it's the other part so we've worked out that x dy dx is dy du so we're going to make those substitutions first okay so substituting what we'll get is um d squared y du squared minus dy du. So that's me substituting this for this and then substitute this part here for this dy du. Um, so plus dy du plus y equals zero. Now what will happen here is that these will cancel out because you've got minus du plus du. So what we end up with is d squared y du squared plus y equals zero. Right, so from here, the next thing we're going to do is to find the uh, complementary function or the auxiliary equation actually to find a complementary function. So um, a is equal to 1, b is 0, there's no dy du term, and uh, c is equal to 1. So auxiliary equation is going to be m squared plus 1 equals 0. That will give us m squared equals negative 1, which means that m is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative one, which is going to be i, so plus or minus i. Now, whenever we get complex solutions to our auxiliary, auxiliary equation, the general solution is y equals e to the px, so p is the real part of our answer, in this case it's going to be zero, times by a, or our arbitrary constant, cos, qx so that will be the imaginary part of our solution to the auxiliary equation plus b sine qx now since there's no real part this just goes to one so we forget about that and the coefficient of the um, imaginary part is one so q is going to be one so p is zero q is one so that gives this uh, general solution. Now we need to be careful because this is x here and our um, equation is in terms of u. So we just need to make sure we put u's there instead. So y equals a cos x, sorry, no, oh, I made that mistake, cos u plus b sine u. Now remember, we're using substitution. So we need to substitute this u back to x. Okay, so we need to substitute back, sub back. Now we have x equals e to the u. 
So if we do the log of both sides, natural log of both sides, we will have u equals natural log x. So final general solution is going to be y equals a cos. So the u we would change to log x, natural log x, plus b sine. And again, we change that uh, u to log x. And that would form the general solution of the original equation. So don't forget to substitute back at the end. You should now be able to do exercise 9b on pages 184 to 185. So just remember we're solving the second order differential equations basically by substitution. Once we've done the substitution, um, we then solve the second order differential equation um, by uh, using the complementary function and a particular integral. That's if it equals um, a function of uh, x on the other side if there's if it's not equal to zero. So um, it's when we've got differential equations. Actually, let's put u's here because we're going to be solving the differential equation where the, there's a substitution's been made like this plus um, c y equals. Now this will be a function of u. Um, and yeah, if we've got a function of u there, then we find a particular integral. And then once we've found our general solution, then we just need to make sure that we substitute back at the end. And then uh, that's completes the method.